The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So it's the middle of July, we're in a cornfield north of London. As you can see by the overcast, the weather has been the story this year for the corn crop. For the most part, the corn crop looks pretty good. We did receive half inch of rain last night and it has been the story basically rain, hot, humid conditions the last couple weeks, especially in July, humid conditions, which lead, can lead to more disease pressure in the cornfield. One thing we have been seeing this year is a little bit of eye spot that has been showing up earlier in the season as opposed to, it generally shows up after tasseling. Eye spot on its own generally doesn't really affect yield, but since it is, we're starting to see a little bit earlier this year, it is something that growers should be aware about. Another disease that is prone to show up is northern corn leaf blight. It loves hot, humid conditions, which we've been getting. The prolonged leaf wetness as well, uh, it just thrives in that microclimate. These two diseases on their own might not have a, a large impact on yield, but combined together with the added stress of the weather conditions that we've had this year can be more prone to uh, contributing to the amount of photosynthate that's in the leaves. Since we do have later planted corn this year, later planted corn does tend to grow a lot taller and you can see in the last two weeks the corn basically shot up. It's given a lot more vegetative growth as opposed to more root mass. So larger, late, later planted corn tends to be larger corn and more prone to lodging. One thing we do have to be concerned about for the 2013 season is the amount of root mass. We don't, we've had lots of rain so we don't have roots penetrating deep into the soil. We are setting ourselves up for some more lodging to occur later in the season combined with this added disease pressure and one thing growers can do at this time of year is to think about using a fungicide application. So a strobal urine based fungicide such as Headline can be applied anytime from now up to tassel emergence or VT tassel. Using a product like that will keep the plant healthier, control diseases and also during the grain fill period when the corn's taking all the photosynthate and nutrients, putting them into converting them to starch and sugars, it's taking them from the leaves and not necessarily taking them from the stalk, which leads to increased standability. This will also, this will aid in better harvest efficiency. It's easier to combine a, a standing crop and also increase your yield potential. So, so one thing you want to consider when doing a fungicide application is the timing. You get a greater response on yield the closer the fungicide application is to tassel emergence. The way you want to look at it is you grab a tassel and just kind of start to unroll the leaves. So you can see we have one leaf in this field, two leaves, and then the third leaf is coming out right there, and then there's the tassel right there. So we are roughly three, three to four leaves away from tassel emergence. The reason why you want to apply it closest to tassel emergence because 75% of your yield comes from the leaves from the cob up. So you want to protect those leaves once they emerge, keep them free of disease, and during the grain fill period, the plant photosynthesizes all those carbohydrates and starch and sugars and puts them into the grain fill period. They take all the energy from those upper leaves in the upper canopy and puts them into the grain, and you don't want them to be cannibalizing the stock and taking those nutrients from the stock which could lead to sustainability issues. So when thinking about doing a fungicide application closer to tassel emergence, you want to get out there now. We are roughly three to four leaves away from tassel emergence which could be depending on weather conditions anytime up to uh, 10 days to two weeks. Another consideration is aerial versus ground application. Both are very effective at controlling leaf, at controlling leaf diseases and increasing plant standability. Both have their benefits, but if you are using a ground application, you want to keep in mind that you want to use higher water volume, so 15 to 20 gallons per acre of water volume. And also, don't worry about doing the corners of the field, the, the odd shaped fields. You want to just pull into the field, do the center of the field and pull out. Don't worry too much about getting in the headlands and backing in the corners, because that's just going to lead to increased stramping. If you are considering doing a triazole based fungicide for, to control vomitoxins in your corn, you want to look at a ground application only and use drop nozzles because we have to get coverage of that silk during the silking period. When it comes to aerial application and you're trying to control vomitoxin, it is not as effective because you don't get the coverage of the silk because the, the spray has to penetrate that canopy and roughly get down to the silking stage. So you don't get that coverage. So if you are looking at a triazole based fungicide to control 
vomitoxins in corn, you want to use ground applications, lots of water volume, as well as drop nozzles to get the, the benefits of the in, in reducing dawn.